A demonstration experiment involves testing a system in a context close to its real-world usage in a manner that highlights its features and demonstrates the absence of undesirable features. It involves system characterization of the complete system in a context similar to its real-world usage. It is often disregarded as cheap advertising and indeed it's highly useful for branding and invention. However, the utility of a demonstration goes beyond this. The image here is of Otis, of elevator fame, who was demonstrating their new safety mechanism that involved locking the elevator car in place if the hoisting ropes fail. He gathered a crowd of people around as he stood on the elevator platform, and then he cut the rope. Instead of plunging to his death, the safety mechanism kicked in. Now, he could have instead written a report that quantified the load capacity of the braking mechanism, showing statistics on its rates of failure under various test conditions, or providing simulations of the failure process. However, for the goals of introducing a product, the more direct demonstration is far more tangible and powerful. By doing the demo live and in person, he is showing that he is willing to trust his life to the invention, and in the process is inducing emotions of anticipation and foreboding in his audience members' minds. Thus they are paying attention, and when the device does not fail, the memory of the experiment is far more tangible than if they read a report. This is not to say that the report should not have been generated. Some people will want a more technical specification about the performance of this device. However, the, the report alone is far less compelling than the dramatic demonstration. Technical reports are only comprehensible to an expert in the subject, and whether the report means the system works well or not is often intangible to a general audience. However, the demonstration is immediately tangible and communicates exactly what the general audience wants to know. If I use this Otis elevator and the rope breaks, I won't die. Demonstrations are also common in genetic engineering. Often they employ beautiful images and videos to entice the reader's attention. In this example, we are looking at a false color rendering of the brainbow. The brainbow is a genetic circuit composed of three fluorescent proteins randomly expressed at several distinct expression levels. A transgenic animal encodes the device, and each neuron of its brain will express one combination of the fluorescent proteins at specific levels. Each neuron then has a unique signature relative to its neighbors in terms of the relative fluorescence on the three channels. When they do microscopy on slices of the brain material, they can quantify each channel, determine which combination of levels are present in each cell, and assign a color specific to that combination. They then false color the image to generate what is shown here. In reality, what scientists probably saw under a microscope looks something like this. And they could have published that image, and the technical merit and utility of the technique would in no way be compromised. They could have provided graphs showing statistics about how well they can distinguish two cells or other technical measures of performance. However, without the false coloring, the ability to distinguish the neurons is not communicated, and the utility of the technique would be lost. It might be understandable to software, but this ability is not communicated without the false color contrivance. Additionally, the technique is simply not as tantalizing and as interesting as when they produce the beautiful image with the colors. The colorful version communicates to the reader not only that this labeling method allows the tracking of individual cells, but you also get an impression for how well this methodology can distinguish the axons of one cell from another and some of the limits on how well this works. Here is another study by Francis Arnold. They are expressing combinations of carotenoid-related genes in E. coli to explore the chemical diversity of biosynthesis. Experimentally, they put a different combination of genes into each cell, grow it up, extract the carotenoids, run them on a chromatography instrument, and report the spectrum. Technically, this is the experiment that they need to perform to quantify yields and identify the chemicals present in each strain. However, they also provide a demonstration experiment. They show images of the population of cells and what plates look like when you grow up individual library members. This provides no additional quantitative information beyond what is present in chromatography traces. However, the data is far more interesting to look at and communicates less tangible aspects of the system. The image of individual bacteria in a field illustrates without any verbal explanation that they are creating diversity of yellow, red, and orange phenotypes. The cells are producing sufficient pigment to be obvious by eye. With traces alone, the interpretation that the amount of pigment is sufficient for human visualization is not readily apparent without doing some math. 
With the image, it is obvious. Visually, we can also tell that they are not generating greens and purples in their experiment. It has a limited scope. As they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. In this case, there are two different images that convey different qualities of the system, but both are very expressive. The demonstration experiment provides framing to the project, information about the diversity that results, and makes the phenotypes that they have generated tangible to the reader. Here is another experiment from Roger Chen. He is trying to communicate the diversity of phenotypes that can be produced using different variants of GFP and RFP. The technical experiment involves measuring the excitation and emission spectra of the variants. Unless I am accustomed to mapping wavelengths onto colors, it is not immediately obvious what the actual diversity is here. Is this a narrow range of shades of green, or is this the full spectrum of color diversity? If I want to choose a GFP that emits at a specific wavelength of light, I would want this technical data to make my choice. However, if I just want to understand the scope of what is available, a demonstration experiment is far more compelling. Like with the carotenoid example, I can readily tell that these phenotypes are visual with the naked eye and they span the visible color range. That there is some variation in intensity, but all are in the same ballpark of intensity. Additionally, the image is beautiful and simply interesting to look at. Let's look at a more current example. Suppose we want to make biofuel producing yeast. For technical characterization, we will need to build a biorefinery, put the bugs into it, and grow it up at scale using cellulose or sugar as a carbon source. We'll need to collect the biofuel and then compute the cost of producing it. If I were an investor, I would want to know this quantitative technical information to be confident that the, that the company can produce a commercially viable product. However, it's just going to look like a page of numbers to the non-expert. Additionally, the company might be hiding details such as the presence of a contaminant in the fuel that makes your car smell like rotten eggs. A real-world demonstration might be to run a car on biofuel. In this way, they can show that the car runs just fine, that there aren't obvious bad smells, and it has a product indistinguishable from normal fuel. Or at an earlier phase of development, the company might want to show an image of the culture after fermentation under a microscope showing how the fuel separates from the medium into blobs facilitating purification. Or they might put the culture in a flask and light it on fire. All three of these demonstration experiments have been performed during the course of biofuel research and they answer less technical questions about the technology and do so in a way that better communicates the technology to their audience. Here's another example. Suppose you want to make genetically engineered cells to replace those that have been killed in patients with diabetes. The technical experiment would involve identifying a mouse diabetes model, performing the treatment with the engineered cells, and then quantifying insulin levels in treated and untreated mice. In addition, taking a video of the mice running around on a treadmill after treatment demonstrates to the audience that not only are insulin levels normal, but the mice are more overtly normal. They don't look fatigued, they don't have weight problems, wounds, or other abnormalities. When developing a new technology, it will always be valuable to think about what experiments would make good demonstrations. There will always be additional, more technical experiments that you need to perform to show that specific attributes of your system work as intended, but this is no substitute for the demonstration. You should ask yourself, what is the closest experiment you can get to the real-world use of this organism? What demonstration experiments are necessary to show that unwanted behavior is absent in the system? And is there anything interesting in a sensory way, like visual, smell, or sound, that will illustrate the functioning of the system?